Hello everyone, welcome to another video, it's Francesco here. So in this video, what I wanted to do is cover the Bear 1.1 update that has just come out two days ago. And I know a lot of you guys are using Bear at the moment as a note-taking service that is one of your favorite ones. So what I wanted to do is actually cover some of the stuff that has changed um, and a couple of their sort of release notes, which will be nice for you um, to actually go and explore. So one of the first things they've done in the general let's cover first, they've actually changed the bulk and delete um, name, rename tags as well, which is quite nice. So you are able to um, edit them quite fast. So you're able to uh, rename and delete them with speed, uh, which is nice for cleaning up as they mentioned. You've also got a new theme as well. So by accessing themes on Mac, you'll be able to see this new high contrast theme. So I'll just click on it. It's quite crisp as well. And it's, it is really nice actually for the visually impaired as they suggest and dyslexic people. Now it reminds me of like a classic sort of black and white um, design, which is really nice. Um, I actually am enjoying the Dracula theme at the moment, which is in premium. Uh, which sort of gives it a better sort of dark mode and night mode, which is nice. But that high contrast theme is now available in both free and premium. So they've also included 75% more fonts, which means they've only introduced three more um, to both free and premium. So if you click on here, you've got uh, Georgia, which is now available. Uh, you've also got uh, Open Dyslexic 2. Uh, and also Courier, which is nice as well. So there, there are three new fonts that are available. Uh, they look like this. So Open Dyslexia looks like that. Um, open Dyslexic, sorry, I am Dyslexic, that's why I said that. Um, Courier, uh, like the old uh, sort of uh, typewriter font, and Georgia, which, which sort of makes it a bit serif-y more. Uh, which is quite nice. And your font choice now affects the note list as well. So once you're in that note list there, you can actually see the actual change. So if I just move this over here and I'll scroll to open text, you can see that the text actually changes here too now. Uh, so that's something they didn't have beforehand. You've also got uh, infinite nesting of tags, so you can include as many tags as you like inside of there, which is quite nice. You can have unlimited amounts and new search terms as well. So if you're searching something like a recipe or if I was uh, wanting to put a script and you can add this minus uh, description. So uh, they will include all of the scripts that don't have the word description in. So you can actually minus that out, which is quite nice. Um, so that's a nice uh, fresh uh, update there, which is sort of nice actually. It's, it sort of it allows you to exclude search terms. So moving on to the editor, now you can highlight um, all of the things in uh, free and pro mode for syntaxing the languages of Perl, Ruby, Scala, uh, C Sharp, uh, I think that's, no, C hashtag, C Sharp, I don't know, um, developer, but Go, CoffeeScript, CSCS, Tix, and R, and MATLAB as well. That is a different language to me, but you can now uh, modify the syntax in that language, which is nice. One new shortcut you've also got, which discontinues a list and includes uh, checklists, is control, uh, sorry, command enter, which will stop and discontinue that list at any given time. You've also got this new feature called, no uh, new shortcut, sorry, called moving paragraphs. So you can now move paragraphs up and down using alt, shift, uh, command, down and up. So you can shift that up and, and that's a really handy feature when you're trying to move stuff around in a list, let's say, at speed. You can also undo completed tasks, which is quite nice. Apparently there wasn't the ability to do that before, which I didn't actually notice. You've also got exporting. So you can export to task paper now, uh, which is another option, um, which is a popular one apparently. People have requested this one. Uh, you can syntax export into JPEG, PDF, and HTML uh, for the code syntaxing highlights, but that's only available in Pro. You've also got better word exports, which improves the docx style, and again, uh, a bare Pro feature. So you can also add the modification date and creating creation date uh, in the exports of TXT, MD, and uh, docx, and task paper, and HTML as well. So in terms of importing, you can import from more apps in addition to Evernote and Vespa. You can also import from more apps like Day One, Task Paper, uh, Weblock, Files. So you actually have the ability to, let's say you've got Day One history of all that, you can actually import. You can find all of the import information here on File and then import from dot dot dot. Uh, and that's handy because once you're importing from Day One, you've actually started uh, capturing uh, diary notes, which is nice. So if you want to export everything to bear, then you can now. 
Escape tags as well, if you don't want to create new tags when importing, you can now have the option to escape tags that are found. So escape tabs look like this when you've imported notes. Um, so you actually have the ability to uh, import those, which is pretty efficient as well. Um, again, for Mac, you've now got touch bar support, so you can start using uh, the bear for Mac on the touch bar. You can drag in tag, drag to tag, sorry. Um, so now, uh, instead of, so now what you can do is, is you can import them. So for example, if I wanted to drag that, I can drag that into there, which is nice and easy. So you can select multiple notes in the list and merge them into one super note. So if I did this, um, and I was like, uh, okay, I want to merge as one big super note. Uh, damn, why did I do that? Um, because now I've, well, now you can see that it merges into one whole note, which is quite nice. Um, but I didn't want it to do that actually. So I can control Z, we'll get it back, which is nice. Um, but that's a handy feature to have in case you've made too many notes or you just wanna be able to uh, bring stuff together. So one of the things you can do is quick look support, which allows you to quickly preview a note by uh, you know, hovering over each one and pressing the space button. Uh, next one is you've got new Firefox extension that joins the Chrome one and the Safari one, allowing you to connect your browser and quickly clip things from uh, Firefox, which is nice. A nice extension to have and it works pretty smoothly. Now on iOS, you've also got peak and pop. So on S6, uh, sorry, the 6S and the 7 users will be able to use a 3D touch gesture. Um, you've also got web clipping as well. So you've got the Bear app extension now available on the uh, the extension that allows you to quickly share something, which is quite nice. Something that I use quite uh, pop, like quite regularly in my day. Uh, you've also got haptic feedback as well. So you're actually able to um, tap on to-dos, fold text and reveal nests. Um, so it's quite interesting. You've actually got the ability to push down on your iPhone um, and you can actually shake it now. So it's got these little functions and which I'm sure will be explained on the 6S and 7. You've also got Hey Siri, so Hey Siri, read my note and you'll be able to read your notes aloud in Bear, which is quite nice. So I might try that on uh, my Siri because on the way you could read yourself a note you wrote later. You've also got automatic font changes. Um, so they have been added as a new callback URL for apps like Workflow, Launch Center, Pro, Center, Center, uh, Launch Center Pro to changing Bear's font. Anyway guys, there's some of the new features inside of the new BEP 1.1 update. My opinions are that they're doing a great job. As you can see, a lot of this stuff is granular, so they've actually been t focusing their attention on trying to improve the experience into the details and the micro um, improvements, which is great because that's what the community needs and it needs to improve on. They haven't actually introduced any massive new features in this one, which is good. I think that's the tactic that they need to be working on. The sort of general idea of it is something that people are enjoying at the moment, so they just need to keep refining what they have. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do subscribe. If you want to join the Facebook group as well, I've started a new Facebook group. I'll include it in the description. You can now go and join in and discuss stuff about the productivity community, uh, but this is specifically for my channel, so I'd love anyone to come there and to chat, um, to share any ideas, to share what they think about any of the new feature updates or any of the content on the channel. Also, I'm, I'm on Instagram as well, so please do join me there as well. Um, I'd really love to share with you a few photos as well. So, but anyway, guys, so enough for the pushing. That was the Bear 1.1 update. I'm looking forward to featuring more features uh, on the next couple of weeks of new updates inside of Bear. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of the new update. I'm looking forward to hearing them and reading them. Let me know in the comments whether you are using Bear now as your default note-taking application too. But anyway, guys, make sure to have a great week. Keep productive, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.